This video is about flexibility and overlapping action in animation. Uh, and one of the, uh, the reason I've got this, um, this image of Pocahontas on the front of this video uh, is because this is a film that I worked on many years ago. And although I didn't work on Pocahontas herself, I was always incredibly impressed by the work that the animators did on that, in particular the marvellous work that Glenn Keane did. Uh, and also the incredible amount of work they had to do dealing with her hair. Uh, and the hair of Pocahontas was almost like a separate character in itself. You would animate Pocahontas, which was a hard enough job doing a, a, a believable uh, and beautiful Native American woman, uh, and then this whole extra problem of, of animating her hair. Long, flowing black hair, uh, especially in this song, paint with all the colours of the wind, her hair is flowing and blowing all over the place, and it's very flexible and it's overlapping all over the place. Um, and you'll often find this with, with, with animation that there's, um, you know, you've, you've got the main character that you're doing and then there'll be some other aspect of it uh, which involves a great deal of extra work. One of the reasons why Disney, um, when he created Mickey Mouse, he gave him those two round inflexible ears was so as not to animate, have to animate flexible and overlapping action on the, on the ears. So he kept it nice and simple. So we've got three terms here to um, discuss, or four rather, because uh, if we talk about flexibility, that's quite a big he heading. We've got essentially four different concepts, drag, follow through, overlapping action, and also successive breaking of joints. Um, and I'm just going to go through these in turn just to explain to you what we're talking about. They're all quite similar, but it's important to know that there are differences uh, between them. And if we go back to... Uh, uh, Frank and Ollie and their 12 principles of animation. Uh, you'll recall that we had uh, timing, spacing, squash and stretch, anticipation, uh, staging, straight ahead versus pose to pose, and follow through and overlapping action. So that's what we're talking about here. Um, uh, uh, follow through and overlapping action. Um, so if we go back uh, to our terms, we've got drag, follow through, overlapping action, and then successive breaking of joints, which was a, a term invented by Art Babbitt was one of the great Disney animators, and we'll come to all of them in turn. So let's start with drag. So here's um, Zigzag, the evil uh, Grand Vizier from um, uh, The Thief and the Cobbler, uh, and this is a walk cycle that I animated on him where he's walking into the Golden City. Um, you can check it out on uh, YouTube. Uh, and um, as Z Zigzag's arms are kind of making these kind of stabbing motions, uh, moving forward and back, uh, as he's walking forward, he's he's kind of he's kind of making these stabbing moves with his hands because he's a villain, <laughs> he's a bad guy. But as his hand stabs forward, the sleeve will drag behind the main action. So the main action is the hands moving, and then the sleeve is dragging behind the hands as they move forward. The next thing that happens is as uh, Zigzag's hand starts to move backwards, the sleeve will follow through or overlap the main action because remember that the sleeve is not going to be the, the timing on the sleeve is not going to be the same as the timing on the hand uh, the sleeve is going to happen four to six frames later everything is going to be delayed because this is soft loose material so it's going to follow through or overlap the main action of the hand so you've got drag where the sleeve is dragging behind and then follow through or overlap, which are really almost the same thing, where the sleeve is following through and overlapping the main action. Here's a, a, another example. Uh, here's a, a character shaking its head very rapidly, um, and the main action here is the character shaking its head, and then the soft, loose flesh in the face will tend to uh, follow through or overlap the main action of the character. Here's another example. This is taken from the animator survival kit, and this is of a dog with big floppy jowls. Um, uh, and I've done an awful lot of this kind of work. I, I worked on a number of um, uh, talking dog movies. Uh, I worked on uh, Underdog and also Marmaduke. And in both those cases, when we animated the uh, lip sync on the muzzles, we had to deal with the loose flesh uh, in the jowls, especially in Marmaduke. And um, so we, we had a lot of work there to make those feel uh, soft and fleshy and convincing, but also not distracting from the main action. So uh, as the dog moves its head here, 
the jowls will, uh, will, will there the jowls are dragging behind the main action of the dog and here they're following through and then finally they're settling. So that's the main uh, principle to keep in mind, drag, uh, follow through or overlap and then finally settling at the end. So on, if we go back to Pocahontas, her hair will tend to drag behind her head, then follow through and overlap the main action of her body. Here's another um, uh, uh, piece of work that I did on uh, uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Uh, this is an enormous sea serpent um, in which the, um, uh, the, the main motion of the sea serpent came from its body here, its kind of middle section, and the head of the snake tended to drag behind it and, and overlap uh, the main action and follow through. In addition, it had all these tentacles, which also tended to drag behind the sea serpent and then overlap or follow through uh, the main action. Um, other examples include fish. Uh, when fish swim, their fins tend to overlap the uh, main action of the body. You'll find all sorts of examples of this in nature. Anytime you've got a creature with tentacles or uh, soft flesh, or even if you're animating cloth, uh, let's say if you've got a character with a big overcoat or something like that, you're going to have to deal with all the drag, overlap and follow through on the cloth. Nowadays, if you're doing cloth in CG, you tend to use a simulation uh, because it's, um, in theory, if you get the simulation right, then it's going to save the animators a great deal of work. Now here's a related concept. This is called successive breaking of joints. And this is a concept that was that was really invented, as far as I know, by Art Babbitt, a great Disney animator who invented who who did the mushroom dance in Fantasia and also animated the Wicked Queen in uh, Snow White. And here's an example taken from the um, animator's survival kit of a character banging a drum. And uh, what Art uh, demonstrated was how you could get flexibility in uh, parts of the body without actually bending the body parts themselves. All you have to do is break the joints in succession. So here's um, excuse me, this character here is 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 lifting this um, baton in order to bang the drum, and as he pulls his hand back, his wrists and elbow bend, and then as the uh, wrist comes down uh, here, uh, the the elbow goes down, but the hand is going to keep going up again. And so you get this kind of figure of eight feel uh, where each joint is breaking in succession uh, and you get a feeling of flexibility uh, thereby. And you will hear animators talk about successive uh, breaking of joints. Now here's an exercise that we can do uh, in order to um, uh, uh, use the, uh, actually use the graph editor in order to create a feeling of um, overlapping action. But we'll come on to that in the next video. Uh, the important thing to remember uh, is to get the idea, the concept of flexibility and overlapping action in animation. And then we'll come to the exercise in the next video.